Hello everyone, thank you for watching Sideline. Uh, our guest this week is Ms. Bieta Dipmore, Program Manager at GS Implemented Cooperative Technical and Vocational Education and Training Project. So, Ms. Dipmore, it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much also for receiving us and giving us the opportunity to so share from my side. <laughs> our pleasure. So you are a TVET expert from German International Cooperation C Agency and you have been in Mongolia since March 2018 and now you are a program manager responsible for a project contributing to the quality of technical and vocational education and training in Mongolia. So could you br briefly introduce us to your uh, project, the Cooperative Technical and Vocational Education and Training. Yeah, more than happy to do that. Um, the CTVET project GIZ is implementing here on behalf of the German Ministry for Economic uh, Cooperation and Development uh, is focusing uh, really to support uh, Mongolia in improving the quality of training performance mm -hmm. in the TVET sector in order to achieve really better outcomes in the system so that young Mongolians really get into employment mm -hmm. and uh, receiving the skills and competencies needed at the workplace in future. This project is also co-financed um, by the Korean international mm -hmm. agency Koika, um, as well in the past from Australian and Swiss government. Mm -hmm. So we are really also happy to have a really combined and uh, approach um, in the sector with other development partners uh, contributing to the reform process in, in TVET sector in Mongolia. Mm -hmm. So the technical and vocational education and training systems play an important role uh, in creating human resources uh, that help developing countries improve their economic structure. So as the Mongolian economy grows, the demand for the skilled uh, workers is rising. So how would you evaluate the quality of this sector in Mongolia? and also what factors are important to further develop the number and the quality of TVET uh, graduates? I guess um, it's very critical in order to really um, get young people into the employment, what is should be the outcome also of the TVET sector, mm -hmm. that we have corresponding systems in place. Mm -hmm. On the one side, that's through the education system, starting from basic education through TVET, higher education, uh, the employability is uh, really enhanced and fitting to the needs of the industry so that this education system responding to the needs. On the other side, we also need for economic development, the private sector on the other hand, uh, mm -hmm. to create jobs because yes. the education sector by themselves will not create the jobs in need for economic development. And therefore, it's very critical that we have an integrated employment approach mm -hmm. uh, focused on and from the perspective of the CTVET project, um, we are focusing on the of TVET part. So we are working with TVET schools on the one hand, um, where we uh, invest into the teacher qualifications um, to improve the quality of training itself, um, supporting also mechanisms and uh, a closer exchange between TVET schools and the private sector side mm -hmm. and companies in order to speak to each other about the demands um, so that um, skills in need uh, are really getting reflected in the training programs. Mm -hmm. And we have a really rapid change of uh, uh, changes happening in, in the industries nowadays yeah? with 21st skills century uh, skills needed. Um, we have more technologies, upcoming automatization, uh, digitalization. Mm -hmm. So um, to keep with that changes so that continuous dialogue is really critical. Um, and. Um, I guess there are really good examples already where schools have a close contact with uh, companies having a regular dialogue mm -hmm. on the level of the schools. There are also existing formats where uh, through the association network the TVET sector is talking uh, to each other. Um, but I guess there is uh, also uh, the relevance to very clarify more intense also the roles and responsibilities um, on the one side also of either the TVET schools itself, but also the private sector, how they really should uh, inform the sector about needs mm -hmm. uh, and providing also opportunities for young people um, to explore um, the world of work during the training already. Um, because the school can deliver one part, mm -hmm. um, on theoretical part, on practical training, so we have in Mongolia uh, some of the schools are very well equipped, uh, so our partner schools I see have also latest technology available mm -hmm. in the workshops, 
uh, the teachers get really used to these new technologies to provide a practical training um, on the one side, but the real world of work is happening in the companies and therefore it's also very critical to have sufficient um, workplace learning opportunities for young people available and uh, train them in a systematic approach also uh, in school and in the company. Mm -hmm. So like the dual approach, which we know also uh, from experience in Germany, uh, which brings as an outcome also high employability rates under, the young, under young people because they are from the first day onwards already um, partly uh, connected to the companies they later on work in. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, maybe that uh, is what I have observed and uh, I see many good examples, mm -hmm. um, good practices. Um, but um, I guess it's also to bring really up these good practices to the system, um, the system level somehow, to get uh, these good practices from singular schools into the whole TVET sector network. Mm -hmm. We need to focus both on in, in school training and also on job training. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So this CTVET project, the Cooperative Technical and Vocational Education and Training Project, uh, supports the development of the TVET teacher training system. So could you elaborate on the, the uh, teacher training system and uh, how are you, like how many teachers have you trained and how will those TVET teachers be prepared? Mm -hmm. Maybe say in, to say in the beginning, it's we see the teacher as the key to improve the quality mm -hmm. in, the, in training provision in the TVET sector yes. because you can have nicest equipped workshops but the, if there mm -hmm. is no one able to utilize that mm -hmm. into the training um, it's a uh, meaningless investment. Yes. So that's why I uh, like GIZ uh, projects focused on the teacher training from the very beginning 2013. Yeah. That is always the key for us so we have mm -hmm. trained more than 1000 teachers 1, uh, until now since 2013 in the project mm -hmm. uh, on the one side focusing that they really keep up with the technological uh, developments that they are able to use the equipment in the training workshops as existing in the in the schools mm -hmm. um, be also keeping updated about the latest developments in the companies mm -hmm. to always reflect into the trainings they have to deliver but um, a very critical part is also to uh, the adjustment of the way of training mm -hmm. if you see from the, the needs of company sides they are requesting young people who can uh, work independently, yeah. who have a good understanding of a whole work task, mm -hmm. who have a certain attitude towards the work. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And um, this also requests new methodologies in the training provision. Mm -hmm. um, so it means it's not about a teacher standing in front of a class uh -huh. explaining on the, on the board. Mm -hmm. It's a practical training. It's about um, yeah, unlocking uh -huh. um, the potentials the students have to work really on projects by themselves from the planning mm -hmm. of a work task to the evaluation of a work task. Mm -hmm. And this needs a different uh, role of a teacher. So it's not just the teacher on the class in front, it's uh, the coach, it's the mentor for the young people. And uh, this is also a strong focus we take and uh, in our further trainings mm -hmm. uh, in, the t in the teacher training. And we see also how motivated teachers get out of these trainings because this change of a role um, is also encouraging themselves if they see also the successes, how the students develop and can work independently on projects mm -hmm. later on they find in the industries. It's also a motivation for a teacher to see the successes behind. And uh, for us it's now important, um, having invested that much in so many trainers, mm -hmm. uh, seeing also outstanding trainers who have an attitude um, to share what they have learned, Mm -hmm. um, to multiply that into the TVET system to other schools. Because we are working with seven uh, mm -hmm. TVET schools in the moment um, and now from that point those trainers of trainers being really able to multiply which needs a certain framework mm -hmm. to do this work because it's an additional task for those ones um, but it can make a big impact in the reform process. Another uh, important factor we have seen is that uh, in the last years, there was not a, a real um, pre-service teacher training available mm -hmm. in the country. It was uh, existing in Mongolia 
many years ago already, uh -huh. but it somehow disappeared. Mm -hmm. And it's a, a very critical part also to train the new generation of teachers, make it an attractive career pathway, mm -hmm. um, because the teacher is that critical in the system to improve the quality. Mm, exactly. So therefore we're working with um, the Institute of Engineering and Technology, which has been selected through a um, selection process with the involved ministry mm -hmm. um, to provide a master degree program for the teachers for developing the future generation of TV teachers. Uh -huh. On the one side, also uh, um, teachers who are in the system can enter in the master program to uh, develop mm -hmm. further, mm -hmm. but also um, people who have not yet been teachers can enter into the system maybe with an engineering background, so which are really mm -hmm. interested into this training as well occupation have the chance now um, to get on a master trainer level mm -hmm. um, in, and we work on that with a strong collaboration with a German university also who is in Germany providing teacher training mm -hmm. and bring in this experience into this master training program mm -hmm. also. So we've talked about the seven uh, TVET schools that you've been collaborating and then you are uh, aiming to uh, develop them as the capacity uh, development centers. So, could you tell us, like, uh, how, like, what kind of work it takes to convert those schools into uh, into capacity development centers or CDCs? So, also, what benefit does it bring to um, to the students and also to the society? And also, what steps have you been taking for the development of those CDCs? Uh, I guess um, in Bangoya we have more than seventy TVET schools. So public and private ones. Uh -huh. yeah. So one-tenth of them are, are currently yes. focused on in uh -huh. our project and uh, in, in a reform process you cannot uh, move 70 schools at the same time mm -hmm. on the same level. Yes. Um, and we have seen that there are also very uh, many duplications within the schools uh, providing the same training courses in the same local areas, a lot of duplications which is on the one side difficult for students so to decide which school to go for, but mm -hmm. also especially for private sector uh, to see, okay, uh, where my future workforce will be trained on. So the specialization approach is uh, through the development of a, a network of specialized capacity development centers puts efficiency of the system in forefront uh, mm -hmm. to make the whole TVIT school network more efficient, uh, specialized in certain trades. So the seven TVET schools we are working with are specialized in fields like one school is in welding specialized, another mm -hmm. one in mechatronic, electrics, then there is another school on construction and so on. Mm -hmm. So with the specialization, first the investment into the school can be very focused in these fields. Uh, what, what was also our uh, support in the past uh, to really equip in these specialized fields, uh, workshops, train teachers uh, in these fields intensively also with support of um, international um, uh, trainers uh, who are based in the schools in the past. Um, and then also for the private sector it's um, very clear to with which school to collaborate with. Mm -hmm. If I'm coming, uh, if I'm a construction company, mm -hmm. um, I have one school which is specialized in construction to go for uh, to see how we how to collaborate, how to uh, really focus the training programs according to the needs of the companies. Mm -hmm. And then these um, CDCs um, are not only the ones to provide student training, they also can provide skills upgrading courses for the industry, yeah, um, mm -hmm. really providing these services to the private sector for mm -hmm. workforce development. Mm -hmm. um, they can provide teacher training to other schools mm -hmm. in the respective field because they have well-trained teachers, uh -huh. they have the training environment mm -hmm. available, they have the latest updates also on um, training methodology as they keep updated uh, through the CDC network uh, itself. How did you select those uh, seven uh, schools? And also in the future are you going to uh, also add more schools and uh, convert more schools into CDCs? Um, also, this uh, GIZ, mm -hmm. as GIZ, we are not selecting the, uh -huh. the schools ah, okay. to be supported. That's always an agreement taken mm -hmm. with the Mongolian government. Um, for the capacity development centers, we are currently also working out the criteria mm -hmm. um, for schools to perform as CDCs jointly with our uh, also government partners mm -hmm. uh, in order 
to have schools who can perform high quality. So there are on the one side uh, criteria also when you are ready to become a capacity development center, but also criteria how to ensure quality in TVET provision. So a very much performance oriented approach. So mm -hmm. our recommendation would be and is in the current reform process also um, that um, to keep also a status of a capacity development center to really look into the performance they provide in terms of uh, that really the, the outcome, the students uh, having the employability in need of the uh, uh, private sector um, and monitor that closely so that the status also has to be renewed mm -hmm. uh, regularly. Uh -huh. So uh, JZ has been implementing TVT projects since 2013 and this current uh, project is being implemented from 2019 to 2023. So uh, could you tell us in the future how do you see the sustainability and continuation of your project? What we are currently focusing on in this current project phase is uh, really sustaining already ach also achieved results. On the one side, uh, working with Mongolian government on the, on the framework for the capacity development center, mm -hmm. the legal framework which is needed that they can perform their task within the TVET sector, mm -hmm. providing high quality training, providing skills upgrading courses, teacher training to other schools, being part of so a partner for assessment of skills and also world skills uh, training center, uh, but also having a, like the legal uh, framework existing to enable them to work flexibly, um, to be able to cause also to respond to the demands, uh, which you cannot plan for the five to ten years. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's also a short term demand. They need to respond towards the companies in terms of uh, of training, and uh, in that regard, a strong focus within until 23 will be also working on the financing mechanism mm -hmm. for the capacity development centers uh -huh. because one of the big bottlenecks we always see are the scar scarce resources available mm -hmm. the equipment in the sector the city system. Mm -hmm. yeah it's about um, also you have equipment already there investments uh -huh. made but uh -huh. a teacher to provide practical training needs consumables needs uh, for example, metal pieces need wood, need uh, mm. construction material to provide the practical training in the workshop. So that needs a proper financing available for these resources. Mm. And uh, with the budget available is the question how it's spent, how mm -hmm. wisely it's spent, because the different training programs cost differently. Uh, allocation of funds towards the schools, this has to be considered. And um, as I said before, for sustainability also, um, the, the integration of the master study program to continuously mm -hmm. be able to provide qualified TV teachers to the sector and update their, um, their skills regularly mm -hmm. to keep with the developments in the labor market, to keep it and, and bring this back into the training programs. Um, we hope with the integration of this uh, master study program, there will be for the future also uh, a system in place in Mongolia providing qualified TVET teachers in the long run. Mm. Beside the fields I mentioned uh, as focal areas for the CTVET project for the next two years, um, we are also working on, on public-private partnership projects mm -hmm. where we collaborate closely uh, with companies mm -hmm. who have a strong interest at in a skilled workforce mm -hmm. and therewith also are ready to contribute to uh, the improvement of quality of training and work closely with TVET schools. Uh, and in these um, PPP projects, we also bring in another funding from the German ministry mm -hmm. into to leverage also the investment of the companies. Uh, and these are opportunities we also would like to explore further. So um, if our companies are really having an interest and in, yeah, strong, uh, get on and get engaged in uh, also in a responsible way, participating in mm -hmm. TVET development in Mongolia, uh, we are more than ready also to discuss mm -hmm. ideas and see how uh, we can bring their expertise mm -hmm. and their requirements into also uh, the collaboration with the TVIT schools we work with or in, in other contexts. Mm -hmm. So, Ms. Dipmore, thank you very much for coming to uh, our studio and talked about uh, this uh, project and we really admire what you've been doing to improve the TVT sector in Mongolia and also uh, to ensure its sustainability. Thank you. You've watched Sideline. We've talked with Ms. Bieta Dipmore, Program Manager of GIZ's implemented CTVET project. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.